Hey y'all, it's Sarah. As you can see, I have got some um, red and blue faux wood painted foam core in front of me. These two colors I'm going to be focusing on today. I've got some kind of um, Flag Day, 4th of July, patriotic things coming up that I'm going to be using kind of these color combinations on. So I thought a video that would just reference those colors would be really helpful. So here we go. Um, you can kind of see maybe some of the detail. Um, we're going to go into a couple different um, variations of this, but really quick, let me tell you what colors we're going to be using, and I'm going to show you some examples of um, the different looks we're going to be getting out of these couple of colors. So you can see that I have Waverly Crimson in the chalk paint. I have Waverly Ocean in the chalk paint. I have um, the Waverly Wax and the color Antique. And um, I want you to see here that it really, uh, it says wax on there. And then we're also using the clear wax. And you want the clear, not the white, even though they kind of look the same in the bottle. We're looking for the clear. I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree bath sponge as my application tool. I'm going to cut this in half. This is part of what gives us some of our graining texture here. So um, I do consider this kind of our tool. I'm also obviously going to be using some foam core. Mine is cut down into um, just three inch by 30 inch strips. If you're curious about what this stuff is, I'm going to show you real quick. Here's a big sheet of it, this project board. Um, this is Ready Board brand foam board. This is something you find in your school supply or office supply section you can see it's very similar to poster board but it is thicker um, it's made with this foam center this is what we're using uh, this video is sponsored by ready board this is my preference it always has been this paper surface really takes the paint well so this is what i have used i have cut it down into 30 inch long strips now your width really doesn't matter but I do cut at this 30 inch length and I'm gonna try to angle this maybe where you guys can see this kind of is manufactured um, with ripples in it so I cut along that for two reasons one I get cleaner cuts uh, along my edges and secondly those ripples can show up in your paint job so when we're cutting it the long way we're not working against them I think that's all the technicalities. Really quick, I want to jump into showing you the couple of different wood tones that I'm going to be showing for this video. So I have a lot of sample boards nearby me, and I want to show you several different. Right now you're seeing kind of a more full coverage look. It's a lot, um, it's a lot brighter. You can kind of see that, but you can still see um, some of that wood look kind of peeking through there at you. Um, the same with the blue kind of navy look. So I want to show you those. We're going to move on to kind of this middle ground of coverage here. So this is really to me akin to um, if you've ever seen a wash done on woods or maybe a a colored stain because you're still seeing a lot of this kind of wood on undertone peeking through at you um, you can still see it in this one even though um, we've got a lot of bright color here you can kind of still see those little bit of wood like colors peeking in at you so we're gonna kind of squeeze all of these different looks in hopefully I'm going to bring in a few more. Like I said, I had a ton of samples next to me. This one is kind of more in this range. Then we're going into the really light ranges of most of the color has aged off. It's washed off. It's been sanded off. Um, but you still get the idea that this had been once painted. This nice vibrant blue. I'm going to bring a few more of those kind of... Um, light colored ones in this one goes more along in this mid-tone section so 
this is the range that I'm kind of hoping to show you in the blues. And I'm showing you all of these so you know that the sky is kind of the limit on um, how many looks you can get out of the colors we're going to be using. Same thing here with the reds. You can kind of see where this looks like over the years. The color has just really worn down, worn off. It's like something you ripped off of a big red barn. Um, you can kind of see here, this is like a really, really faded version. You're seeing the wood greening and the red. And here we have kind of that middle ground where you're getting a little bit of the best of both worlds. So I feel like all of these have their place. Um, in doing this craft and I want to show as many as possible so I want to jump in um, and get kind of messy so grab your paint grab your foam core and let's get a little messy with this I've got all my paints poured and ready I've got some fresh pieces here cut and ready to um, get painted so here is where I like to start. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little distressing. So I'm just gonna open my drawer, find a couple of things to um, poke, stab, and jab with. And um, so I've got these little pokey things here. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna pop a few holes in there. I could have used this pencil to do the same thing. This is just mimicking some wormholes. Because of what I'm turning these particular pieces into, I'm not going heavy with the distressing because it'll be really busy, especially the blue. If I happen to use it for um, a field of blue for my stars, if I put too much distressing on here, that would really start to get um, rather busy on there. So I'm taking this little plastic tool. Um, this came out of a kit that was meant for shaping clay. Um, it's got a little width to it, so it's going to give me a nice little gouge. That's all I'm going to put there. My next tool is actually my nails. I've got a pretty good thickness to them. I am going to dig that corner in and spin it around. Now, um, those of you with really sharp natural nails, I've got acrylic on mine. Um, yours are going to be too sharp to kind of get this depth. A lot of people have had success with a spoon. I have not. It really cracks my piece um, and bends it before it ever breaks that surface. So you can see I've kind of done like a little parentheses there. I'm going to do one up here and maybe one right here in the middle. And I've done them different sizes, um, different areas. That's where I'm going to stop with mine and put these away. My next step is going to be to go ahead and do my edges. I didn't do my edges first on this because this color will leak through these pieces as I hold them up. And I might not would be able to blend it really quickly. So you can see what I've got laid out here. I've got my crimson chalk paint, my ocean chalk paint. I've got some of the clear. Um, it looks not so clear, but it is the clear wax. And I also have the antique wax. So um, these are the paints that I'm going to be using. I'm going to go ahead, I believe, and um, start with the blue because I accidentally got some blue fingerprints on these to begin with. So I'm going to start with the blue. I'm going to bring that in. I've got my sponge cut in half. I'm getting just a little bit of blue to tint this. And then I'm going in with the wax. The reason for the wax is, one, it helps protect the surface so it doesn't warp as bad on us. Two, it's kind of like a medium to help us get the dark and light into this paint and on the surface to give that green kind of look. I don't recommend using the sponge. Typically, I use um, my Dollar Tree kitchen sponge like this for this process, doing the edge here. Um, because as you can see, it is really eating into this bath sponge. So, I recommend using the other one. I've always got the wax mixed in with my paint. We're basically 
kind of painting with the wax and using the chalk paint to tint that wax to um, our preferred colors. And you can see how this is capable of going down in between, which is why um, I didn't want to wait too long to go ahead and start moving this paint around on the top. So I'm going to do this in a couple of um, different ways. So I'm going to go with some of the light ones. We're going to go heavy. And you're going to see where those become the different tones that I showed before. Um, on this particular one, when we're going with the colors, I do not come in and do the knot holes early on like I typically would. I want um, my next layer to be what fills those little distress holes with my paints. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to make a few intentional drags and I'm going to try to clean up any of the mess that I may have gotten down my edges. So I'm going to blend some of that. As you can see, I'm not even pushing down on this. I'm, I'm just kind of setting it on there. I'm not going really heavy with this one at all. Get a little color down on those ends. And get a little color on these ends. I've tried to keep everything in kind of the same direction that my wood graining is going to go when we go over the top of this. So I'm going to go... Go ahead on these where there's some of that paint leak through and use it to move around. So this one I can go pretty heavy. Kind of using it to clean my sponge off. Since it's going to be my heavier one and I just reloaded my sponge, I'm going to go in with that one first. And then I'll use kind of this lighter version on this one. So once again, I'm just kind of, now I'm just dragging this across. I'm not pushing it. I'm just dragging it. This one I may push a little bit to get a deeper, darker, heavier coverage. You can see that I'm working in um, kind of some darker and lighter tones of, of blue grain, if you will. So you can go really heavy on this and this blue is super um, bright, I feel like. But we're going to almost go into just about navy tones with this by the time we're done. It's going to give a more vintage blue when we're done. So I think I might add a little more into this one. I'm going to work that in a little. Got a fingerprint or two that I might need to get off of here. And we're going to go ahead and put these to the side and we're going to jump to the red ones. We want to give this a little bit of time and you'll see kind of the time span in between. We're giving a little bit of time for these to surface dry before we go in with another layer of color because we want it to be color on top of color and not color that wets one another and blends in and turns into like a muddy color mix. So we're going to give this a little time to dry. Right now it's just barely tacky, but I want to give it a little bit more time to dry. And those edges need a little more time to dry also. I've got my blanks laid out for my red now. I'm going to go in and do the very same thing. I'm going to distress it a little by putting in knot holes with my fingernails. And I'm breaking that surface just before I start to kind of turn my finger. Because I want it to embed in there. So, a little jab here, a little stab there. You don't want to get too close to the edges when you're doing this. Um, just simply because that's where you're most likely to start see 
to see peeling um, if it wants to peel up on you. So I try to keep away from the edges as much as I can. Okay, so my next step, I'm going to go ahead and come in. I accidentally got my red in the red. So we're going to have a good mess here. I'm going to come in, dip into this crimson, and I'm getting my clear once again. Same thing that we did with the blue. Now, you're going to want to go, you're going to want to get some of your next layer on these edges. I don't really, on the red, you really don't have to do this part at the moment, this red on these edges, because the antique is going to blend pretty well. The blue, uh, it's, you could do it either way. Um, when we're doing it this way, the antique over the top, you could do your edges with and, and call that good without having to put the color in it, and it still looks fine. Just trying to make sure that I show the steps the same um, each time. So, and you can see there was still blue up here, so mine may be a little interesting. I'm going to come in and do this very same thing. I'm going to come up here where I will do my darkest one. This is a really bright color too, but once we get that other layer going on this, it's going to tone this down quite a bit. So I'm going to blend some of these edges in while I can, while I can get a grain into them. I'll do this middle one a little heavier. And I am doing, for one, my range of motion is not that great right now. But for two, um, I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice, but I am swaying back and forth with this because my arm span, even on a normal day, on this, this long kind of strip, I have a tendency to swoop and then I go down. Um... And I think we all kind of have that natural tendency. So when I do this rocking motion, it allows me to really keep this kind of straight from end to end so that you don't end up having a lot of them that come down and kind of drag off at this very end. And if you've already played doing some of this and just the wood grain colors, you kind of know what I'm talking about. You have a tendency to want to drag kind of downwards when you hit that very end stage that's part of why you see me switch the ends that I start on so I'm going to go in this one get this a little heavier I'm kind of blending out some of those edges that have um, that seeped over when we did our edge. So I think the coverage on these are pretty good. To make sure that I kind of work out any blobs I might have applied there. I'm going to go ahead and separate those a little bit so you can kind of see the difference. So you see one's got pretty good coverage, medium coverage, and um, certainly much less coverage. I went ahead for the sake of time and did some ahead of time so that they could dry. Uh, and I still, once those are finished, will likely be able to get to these as well. Since my hands were still covered in red, I went ahead and picked these red ones up. And I'm going to start with these. So now I'm coming in with my sponge that just has the um, antique color wax on it. And this is, this is very similar to um, what we would do with just the wood graining. However, I'm going to focus really in the areas that have the white spaces first. I want to get some graining applied to that in this brown color first. I 
I'm just dragging those out a little bit. I'm not putting a lot of pressure just yet. I didn't want to completely um, cover that red super hard. When we go over it, we're going to go over it much easier. So I'm going to continue to go into, whoops, slid off my little tracks here. I'm going to continue to go into more of the white areas. Guys, this warping, by the way, that you're seeing on some of my pieces did not come from um, the painting. We have had like 20 days worth of rain here. And when Ready Board sent me some of mine, they were out in that humid uh, rain that we have had nonstop. So that is where this particular um, batch of foam core came from. So you can kind of see, I'm going lightly over this red now. I'm gonna push some of that wax down into this knot hole area. Go ahead and push a little paint down on that side. I missed it completely somehow. So I'm going to let that layer of um, antique kind of sit there for a second while I move on. This is why I like to do multiple ones um, at the same time. Because I can move from one to another. And by the time I get to that other one, it's ready for another layer of color to build on. So down here, we've got a lot of white space to work with. I'm going to work some kind of fake graining into those places first you can see i'm just kind of filling in areas darker and lighter trying to cover up a few fingerprints i had going on here it's my signature So I've got some of the dark and light of um, my antique color going on there. I'm going to go ahead and move to this next one while those uh, soak that in. The more time it has to kind of set, the better you can build on top of that rather than continually kind of just smearing it back off. Get some of these ends here. I could very well leave a little of this white in here. If you can see those kind of drag marks, um, that also leaves a really interesting look in your pieces here and there. That has got a really bold red stripe down it. May have to add a little more red to that. I don't know. We'll see. Make sure I push down into that. So I can come back in here now and build on top of this. And I should be able to um, get a few more layers in. Same thing here. I need to go ahead and fill that little spot in. And trust the process, guys. It looks like a crazy mess right at first. And once it dries and those layers start to kind of show individually, because they'll dry at different, um, at different points depending on their thickness and, um, you know, the, the level of application there, they'll dry at different points. Once it's all dry, you really get to see those tones come through. So don't be don't be scared of what it looks like while it's still damp. 
if you feel like you've got some pieces that look kind of crazy. So I'm going to come back in and darken these knot holes and just kind of rub that out um, across there a little bit. Uh, get a few darker lines down through here. So just going to pull some through. I'm using kind of the point of this. I could pull one down, kind of meet it there with another one. It's very subtle. Let's see if I can get a little darker so you can see what I'm talking about. It's very subtle little details like that that really give each piece its own um, character. So I'm going to come up here to this one, fill in some spots a little darker. And same thing with this one. I'm going to move it down where I don't have to reach so far. Hmm. I think maybe I just will do the knot hole in this one. I really like how, um, how this one looks. So I'm going to darken that knot hole. We'll pull some of that down. We'll go ahead and touch up this one. Pull that down. You can do the same thing with your little gouges. You can kind of make them uh, stand out a little more. Kind of enhance the color right around them. Pull this guy over. Do the same thing. A little more of that dark color again. Okay, I saw where I had a little paint here that I'm ready to smooth out now. It's had time to get darker. I wish you guys could see in person how pretty some of these are sometimes. These colors really look so nice together. Um, well, maybe to me. I'm from the South. It really does remind me of a barn. An old, faded, red barn. So, I'm going to set these aside now to dry. We're going to pull out the blue ones and go ahead and do the same thing to those. You can see here, I've got multiple blues. I'm going to go ahead and come in with my antique. Let's go ahead and hit that one. We'll work some of that color through. Whoops. Pop in place. There we go. Get a little color down in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this to pretty much all of them. Hitting those lighter areas first so I can get that wood grain dark. Or you could keep it light. You could go really light with the wood grain that's on there. There's so many directions you can go with this. And if you're wondering... Can you do similar things on furniture? You absolutely, yes, you can. On the real deal, it does apply slightly different. And typically when I have done one of these finishes, I start with just plain, um, plain white chalk paint. And the reason I do is it gives me a surface that is very similar to this paper surface. And I can pretty much get any color range I want from having that white background so you can totally do this on furniture pieces you'd want to um you want to make sure that you sealed it off after you put all that work into it but you can totally do it Mm 
maybe you can see I'm using my middle finger here at the moment to try to push down and get in a spot where I'm maybe getting those white areas a little better. Ooh, I went a little goopy with that. No mind. Just gonna keep using that little extra there. That's the great part about doing multiple boards at one time. So I'm going to continue on this path until I fill each one of these in. Alrighty guys, you can see some of these um, are starting to dry. Those with more color on it are obviously going to take a little longer to dry and hit their um, kind of normal color state. I've got some of the red ones that we put aside um, so you can kind of see those results. The one I said that was a little crazy on one end and not so crazy on the other, I have ended up liking how it has turned out. If you notice, some of them I have kept a little bit of white into. Um, if you look, it kind of looks like there's been about three layers of paint removed off of this piece. So... I left a little of that, um, but that kind of gives you the vibe of getting all the different looks. Uh, the lighter you go, the lighter variation that you get, the more color you add, um, the darker you start to get into. Let's see if I can find um, some of the middle blues, the darker blues. So, the more you add, you can definitely get into these solid color ranges. And then you can stick with kind of these um, really, really distressed age color ranges. Hopefully, that covered everything. If you've got any questions, be sure to ask them. If you haven't already, jump over to Facebook. Check out the Peppermint Cactus group. Uh, it's really easy to get support there and get questions answered over there. Um, so hop over there, see the inspiration that goes up over there and, um, I'll talk to you guys soon.